Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about working with strings in Python. Now, one of the most common types of data that we're gonna be working with in Python is gonna be strings. And strings are basically just plain text. So any text that we wanna have inside of our program, we can store inside of a string. So I wanna to talk to you guys about all the cool things we can do with strings, and we're basically just gonna get a full introduction into why strings are awesome. So over here, I'm just gonna actually print out a string. So I'm just gonna say print, and inside of these parentheses, I can type out a string. In order to create a string, I need to use quotation marks. So I can make an open and close quotation marks, just like that. Now inside of the quotation mark, I can put whatever text I want the string to have. So we could say like, Draft Academy. And so now we have a string with the text Draft Academy inside of it. So if I run my program, now down here, we're gonna print out Draft Academy, as you can see. And when we have these strings, there's actually a bunch of cool things that we can do with them. So one thing I could do would be to create a new line inside of the string. So if I wanted, I could come over here and I could say backslash N, and you can see it got highlighted in a different color. And what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna insert a new line into the string. So now it's gonna say draft on one line and academy on another line. So I'm gonna click play and you'll see down here we just get draft academy. In addition to the backslash N, I could also use a backslash quotation mark. So if I wanted to put a quotation mark inside of my string, I can't just put a quotation mark like that because Python's gonna think that I'm trying to end this string. So if I wanna include a quotation mark, I can just use this special backslash character and that's called the escape character and it basically just tells Python that whatever character comes after it, we want to render literally. So when I say backslash quotation mark, it basically means like, hey Python, I wanna print out a quotation mark. And so now we'll be able to print out a quotation mark right there. I can also use this to print out a backslash. So if I needed to print out a backslash, I could say backslash and it'll just print out a normal backslash now. So you can see just like that. So if you want, you can use that backslash to make new lines or print out quotation marks or you can just use it as a normal backslash. In addition to just typing out a string here, I could also create a string variable. So I could come down he up here and we can create a variable and we'll just call it phrase and I'm gonna set it equal to draft academy. So I can store this string value inside of a variable called phrase and then when I wanna print out that variable or I wanna access that string variable, I can just type the name of the variable. And you'll see that it's gonna print out the value that was stored inside of it. I can also use something called concatenation. And concatenation is basically the process of taking a string and appending another string onto it. So I could come over here and I could say phrase, and I could say plus, and now I can add in another string. So I could say like, is cool. And now this is gonna say draft academy is cool. So I'm basically appending another string onto another one. They call that concatenation. And so in addition to doing all that stuff, we can also use special things called functions. And a function is basically just a little block of code that we can run and it'll perform a specific operation for us. And so we can use functions to modify our strings and we can also use functions to get information about our strings. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple common functions we can use with these strings and they're actually gonna do awesome stuff. So in order to access one of these functions, I can just say phrase and then I can say dot and I'm gonna show you guys a function that we can use to convert this string entirely into lowercase. So I could just say phrase.lower and then I'm gonna to wanna to type in open and close parentheses. And this will take this phrase, it'll take my string and it'll convert it to lowercase. So you can see now we just have draft academy down here, but it's entirely in lowercase. I could also do the same thing for uppercase. So I could say phrase.upper and this will convert the entire string into uppercase. You can see now it's entirely uppercase. So in addition to converting the string into uppercase and lowercase, I could also check to see if a string is entirely uppercase or entirely lowercase. So for example, I could say phrase dot is upper, and this is gonna give me back a true or a false value. So it's gonna be true if the string is entirely uppercase or false if it's not. And you can see here we're getting a false value because this isn't uppercase. 
I can also use these functions in combination with each other. So for example, I could say phrase dot upper and then a parentheses. And then after this, I could say dot is upper. And now what it's going to do is it's going to run this upper function. It's going to convert it into uppercase. And then it's going to run this is upper function right after that. And you'll see now we're going to get a true value back because it will have converted the whole thing into uppercase. So you can see now we're getting a true value. So you can use these functions one after another. It can be really useful. And there's a few other ones that I want to show you. So we can also figure out the length of this string. So if I wanted to figure out how many characters were inside of this string, I could just say len and I'm actually going to make an open parentheses and I'm going to make a close parentheses. So I'm essentially saying len and this is another function. It's the length function. And inside of this len function, I'm actually passing this phrase variable. I'm basically giving the length function this and it's going to spit out a number. So it'll tell me how many characters are inside of this string. And so you can see here we get 15 because there's 15 characters inside of draft Academy. So that's how we can get the length of a string. And that's going to be really useful as we go forward in Python. We can also get individual characters inside of a string. So imagine if I wanted to just grab one of these characters, like imagine if I wanted to figure out what the first character in this string is, we can actually use an open and closed square bracket just like that. And in here, I can specify the index of the character that I want to grab. So if I wanted to grab the first character in this string, I can put in a zero. So if I say phrase square bracket zero, this is going to give me that capital G. And you can see down here, that's what gets printed out. Now I want to point something out in Python. When we're working with strings, a string gets indexed starting with zero. So you'll notice that in order to access this G, I had to put a zero in here. And that's because in Python, when we use indexes on a string, we start with zero. So if Python is counting the characters or it's indexing the characters in a string, it's going to start with zero. So it's going to say G is zero, I is one, R is two, A is three. So we would say that G is at position zero in the string. I is at position one, R is at position two, A is at position three, etc. So we start counting at zero. So if I wanted to access the first character in the string, this G, I have to say phrase zero. And that's just a special thing uh, in Python. And actually most programming languages do that. So they'll start with zero. So for example, if I wanted to access this A, I'm going to have to put zero, one, two, three. So if I put three inside of here, now we'll be able to access that first A. As you can see, we get an A right here. So this is actually really useful being able to grab a specific character inside of a string. And you're going to be using that a lot as we go forward in Python. There's also another really awesome function that we can use and it's called the index function. And basically what the index function will do is it'll tell us where a specific character or string is located inside of our string. So I could say phrase dot index and I can actually give this a value. So sometimes when we use these functions in Python, we can actually give them information. So I can give this a value and we would call this passing a parameter. So I would call a value that I would give to a function, a parameter, and you'll hear that word a lot. So for example, I could say inside of here, capital G, and now this is going to return the index of the capital G inside of our string. So it should give us back a zero because G is at the zeroth index. And you'll see down here that we get a zero because that's where G is. So for example, if I put an A inside of here, like a lowercase a, it should give me zero, one, two, three, because that's where the first A is inside of this string. So I can click the play button and you'll see it's giving us a three. You can also put actual words in here. So for example, I could put like Academy in here, or I could even just put like ACAD. And this is going to tell me where this starts inside of my string. So when I click play, it's going to give me an eight because that's where Academy starts, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I put something in here that wasn't in the string, so for example, if I put a Z in here, that's not in here, it's actually going to throw an error. So when I play this, you'll see that we get this error down here because 
z is not found inside of our program. So that index function, again, can be really useful and we'll be using that a lot. There's also one more that I wanna show you, which is called replace. So we can say phrase.replace. And in here, I can actually give this two parameters. So I can give this replace function two values that it can use. And the first thing I want to, use to give it is what I want to replace. So for example, I could say draft, and then I'm gonna put a comma in here, and I wanna put in here what I wanna replace draft with. So I could just say like elephant, and now instead of saying draft academy, this is gonna print out elephant academy. So you can see down here, it just says elephant academy. So this replace function can be really awesome because we can replace certain words or even certain letters inside of our strings with other ones. So those are just some basic ways that we can work with strings inside of Python. And there's a lot of these different functions that we can use with strings. These are some of the most common, the ones that I just showed you right now. But if you just do a Google search, you can find all sorts of uh, Python functions that you can try out and use and you know see what they do. Um, but you definitely wanna get comfortable working with strings in Python because you're gonna be working with them a lot. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.